It's time to welcome back our panelists for our final discussion on the show. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham signed an executive order this week that will shake up the Children, Youth and Families Department. The order includes a reorganization of the department, one that is meant to, quote, elevate personnel in charge of protective services, behavioral health and juvenile justice, end quote. Now, the action creates an office of innovation dedicated to researching new best practices and establishing a new advisory council for that department. The executive order follows two reports filed months ago that cited a series of problems at CYFD. Merritt, I know you've been on this. It's something you've been following closely for years now. What was your reaction to this announcement? Are, are lawmakers uh, and others had in mind when it comes to making serious changes to CYFD? Is this what it's going to take, an executive order like this? No, this ex executive order, and I, I never disagree with Eugene, but yeah. it shakes up nothing. Okay. Um, this, uh, this executive order promotes some people to higher middle management positions. Right. It does not address um, uh, the fact that entry-level case workers who have to have a bachelor's and two years experience make the same as Amazon and Target warehouse workers. Right. It does not address that children spend the night in CYFD offices and do not have a, a, a suitable overnight facility mm -hmm. that's safe to sleep in. It does not address the fact that uh, foster parents uh, or parents have no uh, place to make a complaint and have it independently adjudicated. Mm -hmm. That's it, interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the administration is very against that. Yeah. And to me, this is a way to forestall that. Okay. And give the, because there is some language about an independent unit within the agency. Well, if right. it's within the agency, it's not independent, right. even if you say it is. <laughs> uh, this what, what do you, this what do you to me is words. Good. Is it, okay. Interesting. It's interesting. not like, resources. I've got, I've got a specific question for you in a, in a quick second about that. That's actually very interesting. Uh, David, you know, interestingly, the new advisory council prioritizes members with personal experience with the CYFD system, or are we looking at brand new people? What, what, what's the best way to go here? Institutional knowledge counts for something. It does. You, you know, know and, and again, to me, it's the same thing as the school board. You know, we keep doing these things that don't work. So again, we're going to try, but if I were the politicians in the legislature, I would take a very serious look at all of this. Mm -hmm. This They are funding this that isn't working, and these are the most vulnerable people in the state. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't vote, they don't raise money. They need to be looked after, and these legislators are the people that are sort of responsible for looking after them. Right. And I don't know, I think they're failing, and they, they, need, they need to take their responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And look at what is going wrong with this thing. What has gone wrong for what? Mm -hmm. 20 to 30 years? Is that how long it's been since this has been effective? I mean, right. you know, I know a lot of it's related to drug addiction and mental health and all these kinds of things, but mm -hmm. it should be fixable. And I think somebody's got to say, we're going to fund this, we're not going to fund this, and that's the legislature from mm -hmm. where I see it. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Andy, um, <coughs> we're looking for a shakeup here, but the person at the top, is in good shape, according to the governor. That would be, of course, Barbara V. Hill, the COIFD secretary. Is it possible to really get systemic change and true change when it's the same person at the top? And I'm not saying you to comment if she's good or bad. Just that idea. Does it have to be completely top to bottom? Uh, well, I mean, I think there's an argument that she is still relatively new to this, right? She was brought mm -hmm. in to sort of make some changes. Um, right. Overall, I don't know. I, I mean, I think this is, we've been talking about this for years, mm -hmm. right? Going back uh, multiple administrations. Um, I don't know, it's hard to say whether the, the whoever is in charge is really going to um, make a huge difference. I think there's a lot of institutional changes. Maybe it is from top down. Right. Um, but yeah, I would argue that she is relatively new still. So. Interested in your opinion on that. I mean, again, you don't hear a lot of complaints about her specifically when it comes to it, but she is at the top of this dysfunctional, using the governor's word, organization. If it's dysfunctional, why would you keep the person that's running a dysfunctional organization? I almost wonder if behind the scenes she might not be preparing CYFD for federal receivership. Mm. I don't. I, I yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. I, yeah. It, it, because there, there is so much. That's come up wrong before in years past. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was so shocked with um, the first independent uh, review report from the Kevin S settlement mm -hmm. and how poorly CYFD had done. Um, there were, I think, nine of sixty some uh, requirements. Uh, 60 some requirements, only nine uh, CYFD was fulfilling from this 2020 settlement. Yep. Uh, so th there's, 
there's so much wrong there. And you know, I, I think it's a very fair argument mm -hmm. uh, with people who are very, very pro-life when people will say, you're so concerned about the child until it's born and then you don't want to take care of it. Mm -hmm. But we have a governor who pledged in her campaign to put $10 million in the 2024 budget in for a state-funded abortion clinic, mm -hmm. yet she won't pledge any money for an overnight facility for at-risk children. Mm -hmm. She won't pledge any money in the budget for um, really a, uh, an appropriate commensurate wage for entry-level case workers, mm -hmm. which are so badly needed. Mm -hmm. You have to question that. Right. And, and why? And why didn't she do this at the same time during her campaign? Right. Interesting point there. I want to stay with you on this one. Um, the order also calls for the state to contract an out-of-state legal firm to create an annual independent audit of the department. We don't do that already? <laughs> I mean, something about that seems pretty basic. Well, you know? um, what would that do? What would that accomplish in your mind's eye? How would that be different from um, the independent group that's already reviewing the Kevin S. settlement? Mm -hmm which go, goes through all the things CYFD already isn't doing, right. did not do in 2021 and 2022. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what this outside law firm would do that would be different from that. Mm -hmm. We're already paying for that. Good point there. I was curious about that myself. Dave, this new advisory council will consist of seven members, mm -hmm. each serving a three-year term, so we'll start with that, and must represent one of several groups, service providers, foster care representatives, youth advocacy representatives, lawyers, behavioral health providers, and family members with experience in the CYFD system. Each member of the council will be approved by the state senate. Any problems with that? Length of tenure, I mean, I amount mean, of people? Yeah, you know. what immediately comes to my mind is, you know, paralysis by analysis. I mean, mm -hmm. we're setting up another committee. And you know, to, to what Meredith is talking about, the most information we get about what's going on at the CYFD is from court settlements. You know, right. they become a matter right. of public record and we can right. read them. And that is not good. I don't think setting up this thing, okay, so let's let's say, okay, that's a good idea. When is it gonna be set up by? Is there a date for that? I don't I don't know, I didn't read it, but mm -hmm. you know, if it and who's choosing these people exactly? The state senate, do they have to be you know, verified. I mean, we're halfway through the session. Are they going to get it done this session? Are they going to do it out of the session? Mm -hmm. You know, lots of questions. I, 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 again, to me, putting lipstick on a pig, which just never sits well with me. Mm. Let's go back to the uh, situation that Merritt mentioned, the Kevin S. settlement, in case folks are not familiar with that. That is the letter S. <coughs> period. Um, that's a 2018 lawsuit, Andy, brought against the state by 14 foster children claimed the state was, quote, locking New Mexico's foster children into a vicious cycle of declining physical, mental, and behavioral health, end quote. You know, you gotta think about, there's a lot of Kevin S's out there. That's, that's what really hurts here. And you know, how do we, you know, get this to move forward if the governor wants to do a top-down rebranding, literally, or strip this down to its core, where do we start? Is, is it, as Merritt says, with more personnel? Is it more money, as Merritt said as well? I, I mean, Something I think seems it's, missing here. I think that it's, sort of an all of the above, yeah. all, everything, right? Um, I mean, it's money, it's um, resources of, of varying degrees. One thing, when you mentioned um, the, mm -hmm. the folks that were supposed to be on that advisory council, right? One mm -hmm. of the things that caught my attention uh, reading that was people that have been through the system before. Right. And I wonder if that means, w that means a lot of different things, right? Or it could mean a lot of different things. But is that mm -hmm. somebody who is a success story in here? Is that somebody who, uh, there's also instances where CYFD has overcorrected in the past, right? Where mm -hmm. you've got families who are being, for lack of a better term, harassed for their kids missing too much, for family That's vacations, right. for right. illnesses. And um, once you're in the system, you're in the system, right? You've got mm -hmm. a case, uh, case opened on you. So uh, is, is it those people? And I don't know. I mean, I don't know who the best person to be uh, in that situation is or that position. But also, is it just sort of window dressing? Is yeah. it saying, you know, yeah. we're, we've got somebody on here and how much input do they have? I don't know. But yes, right. to, to go back to your original question, mm -hmm. I think it is um, all of the above that mm -hmm. uh, needs to be fixed mm -hmm. at CYFT. I want to get this in, Merritt. Interesting point here. Republican lawmakers have pushed for further changes to the department, you know, pushing a Senate bill that would create an independent accountability office. Do they have something going here? Is there something better than what's being proposed or? Absolutely, and I think okay. there's bipartisan support for this. Um, yeah. You know, I sent a, a clip to everybody. Uh, Senator Joseph Cervantes last night. I mean, mm -hmm. he's he's just had it. Yeah. This this is on his last nerve, right. and um, 
uh, there uh, was created, uh, uh, former Representative uh, Rebecca Dow created uh, the Child Welfare, I think it was the, or the Early Childhood Caucus, mm -hmm. and CYFD was a big part um, uh, of that caucus's focus. Mm -hmm. And I think that caucus is uh, still present, and mm -hmm. uh, Senator Crystal Diamond has really uh, taken up this cause. And uh, she is working across the aisle. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, that's uh, key given the makeup of the legislature. Mm -hmm. and. There are, there are so many uh, breaks in the system, and this, this legisl uh, legislation has to go forward. Right. It seems the administration does not support it. And I, and, is that interesting? And that yeah. is so surprising to me because so much of this, all of this, right. was inherited. And this right. could have been a real win for this administration. Right. And so it, I find it just such a surprise given the uh, budget surpluses that were right. in place right. and the real opportunity to make good on this, that this is just such a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And there's still an opportunity right. to pull a win out of this. Right. And this executive order is not a win. And your, your point's well taken. It's going to take a full eight-year run if they had started in year one to get to some place. You can't turn this around in two years or three years. It's going to be difficult. Thanks again to our line panel, as always, this week. Be sure to let us know what you think about any of the topics. These folks covered on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages, and catch any episode you might have missed on the PBS app or your Roku or Smart TV.